ago, in a faraway land, there were families living and working in the great high mountains. They planted trees and watched them grow into great forests. Then they used the wood from the trees to make pool toys, games, play blocks, and many other nice things for those living in the valley. Once a week, a big train would travel up the mountain. In all, there were three big trains. When one of the big trains would leave the station, he would say, only we can go up the steep mountain to bring food, clothing, and supplies to the people. When the big train was ready to leave the mountain, the people would load their crafts onto the train to be sold to those in the valley below. There was also a fourth train. He was called the Little Red Train. Whenever he pulled into the yard to load up with fuel, the big trains would boast, you're just the little train that can travel only in the valley. Only we are strong enough to go up the steep mountain. What kind of attitude did these big trains have? Yes, Dalvin. Proud attitudes. Yes, they had a proud attitude. And what did they look down on? Who did they look down on? Yes. Shannon? The little red train. The little red train. Yes, Jordan? They were like bullies. They were like bullies. They looked down. Only we can climb up the steep mountain. One cold winter, a terrible storm blew across the valley. The big trains waited for the snow to stop falling so they could safely bring supplies up the mountain. But day after day, the snow continued to fall. The snow became so deep that it covered the fence post. One big train said to another, we can't go up the mountain. We'll get stuck in the deep snow. You're right, said the other train. I'm not going. I'm not either, said the biggest train. Meanwhile, everyone on the mountain was running out of food, even Mr. Wiggles' general store. I'm sure one of the trains will be here soon to bring us food, he told the people. But as time passed, Mr. Wiggles began to worry. Finally, he called to find out why the trains were not coming. The biggest train answered, the tracks are buried in deep snow and we'll get stuck. It will be spring before we can make it up the steep mountain. Spring! cried Mr. Wiggles. We can't wait until then. If we don't get food, everyone will die. Well, said the biggest train, we're not going. It's much too dangerous. What attitude did that big train have? Yes, Jordan? He's only thinking about himself. Yes. What didn't that big train have? Uh, Kaylee? Compassion. Compassion, that's right. They didn't have compassion, the train. Didn't feel for others. Even though the people were going to die, too bad. I can't help you. Down in the valley, the little red train kept chugging along, going from town to town. One day, a girl said to the little red train, if the people on the mountain don't get food, they will die. We can't let the people die, said the little red train. If the big trains won't go, I'll find some helpers and we'll try to make it up the mountain. Now what do we find about the little red train? I, right? Esther? He had compassion for all the people on the mountain. Yes, he had compassion for the people on the mountain. Even though it was a little train, we can't let those people die up there. We gotta do something about it. Let's see what happens. When the big trains heard that the little red train wanted to go up the mountain, they roared with laughter and said, you can't go up the mountain in that deep snow. You can't even make it up the mountain when there is no snow. The least I can do is try to help the poor people, answered the little red train. The biggest train puffed loudly and said, your wheels are much too small and your engine is much too weak. Besides, if you get stuck in the snow, you and your helpers will be stranded until springtime. And don't expect us to help you when you get stuck. Then the other big trains joined in and made fun of the little red train. If we can't climb the mountain in the deep snow, you surely can't. 
Someone must try to help the poor people, insisted the little red train. If no one else will go, then I will. The big trains were furious. You'll never learn. You're just a proud little train trying to act like one of us. What were the big trains trying to do to that little red train? Okay. Yes, Shannon? They were trying to get him not to go. Yes. And what else were they doing? Gerard? Trying to make him feel bad. Yes, trying to make him feel bad. And you know, there's people like you, they say, oh, you're no good, you'll never accomplish anything. You're a dummy, you're, you, you can't do it, it's too hard. You know, you gotta learn how to listen. You gotta just try, do your best. And that's what the little red train, I know I'm small, but I can't let those poor people die up in the mountains. Someone's gotta go, if you're not going, I'm gonna try. And he, they laughed at the little red train. You can't do it. You're going to get stuck. You can't, you can't, you can't. Well, at least I can try. Meanwhile, on the mountain, hail and snow continued to fall. Word reached some of the people that the little red train was going to try to bring them food. But that did not stop the people from worrying. One woman grabbed the empty food basket and ran to see her neighbor. I just heard that a train is going to try to bring us food. Is it true? Yes, came the reply, but it's just the little red train, and everyone knows he isn't strong enough or big enough to make it up the steep mountain, especially through this deep snow. The little red train went to the station to be loaded with food and supplies. He asked the station manager, will you please find some people to help me bring food to the hungry people on the mountain? The station manager went all around town looking for helpers. I can't help, said Mr. Frazzle. I'm too busy. With all this snow, said the idlers, we're waiting until springtime before we work again. And so it went. Out of the whole town, only one family agreed to go, the Kinderfelds. The little red train smiled and said, we'll be leaving tomorrow. Be sure to bring your shovels. Early the next morning, the little red train fired up his engine. Then he blew his whistle and called out to the helpers, all aboard. As the Kinderfells stepped onto the train, the big trains blasted their loud whistles and made fun of the little red train. He's so foolish, said one of the big trains. Does he really think that he can make it up the steep mountain, especially in this deep snow? went the little red train as he pulled out of the station. It seemed the puffs of smoke were saying, try, try, try. The big trains hooted and tooted and laughed as the little red train went puffing away with his cargo and his brave helpers. Even though the little red train got all that discouragement from the big trains, what did the little red train do? All right, yes, Kaylee. He kept trying even though the big trains kept trying to put him down. Yes, kept trying, and you gotta learn to do that. Don't listen when people are trying to discourage you and keep you down, you're nobody, you can't make anything out of yourself. You just say, no, nope, I'm gonna do the best I can. You know, that's all we can do. And sometimes that's the secret to becoming successful. You just keep on trying. You learn, you study, you try to get a good education, and you listen to your teacher, listen to your parents. And that's the way you get ahead in life. And that's what these books are to, here to, to teach you, how to become successful. So let's see what happens next now with the little red train. Puff, 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 went the little red train as he started up the mountain. Never before had he gone so slowly. As he pushed his way through the deep snow, he said, let's do our best and try. The people on the mountain really need our help. Then the little red train and the helpers began singing. Try, 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 we'll do our best and try. Mountains we will try to scale, though it's hard and we may fail. Try, 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 we'll do our best and try. We'll try! The mountain got steeper and steeper, and the snow became deeper and deeper. 
and the little red train went slower and slower. Keep trying, the helpless shouted. Keep trying, don't give up. Puff, 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 went the little red train. His engine worked as hard as it could. I won't give up, puffed the little red train. I won't give up. I'll do my best and try. What did the helpless tell the little red train to do? All right? Yes, John. To keep trying. Yes, keep trying. Don't give up. Keep trying. And what was the response of the little red train, Lisa? I, I'll try. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep going. And you know, that's the secret to success. There's another big word. It's called perseverance. Once you make up your mind, you're going to do something, you're not a quitter. So many people quit. It's hard. It's too hard. Did you ever say that word? It's too hard. Yes. Oh, I never wanted yes. to hear that from my children. I have five children, and I have 14 grandchildren. And as, I never want to hear them say, oh, it's too hard. I can't. I can't. I always try to tell them, try. Try. You know, the, the secret of, of getting an education they always give you something more. If they just had you adding two plus two equals four, and that's all you would do, you'd never learn anything more, would you? So they gotta go 20 plus 20, and then 65 plus 85, then 1,365 plus 45, and, and then they get into subtraction, and multiplication, divisions, fractions, decimal, percent. It's always taking you from the known to the unknown. That's how you learn. You don't become, oh, it's too hard. Well, that's how you learn. And then one day you might be writing books also, or science books, or be a scientist, or an engineer. And that's what an education is. So you keep trying. Don't be a quitter, okay? Suddenly, as the little red train rounded a mountain curve, there in front of him was a giant wall of snow, taller than the train himself. The little red train built up steam and plowed straight into the snowbank. Crunch! The little red train screeched to a sudden stop. He pushed and puffed as hard as he could, but his wheels just spun and spun. He was stuck. Oh no, cried one of the boys. We're going to have to stay here till springtime. Everyone get out your shovels, yelled Mrs. Kinderfeld. We're not giving up. What did Mrs. Kinderfeld say, Raquel? She says she's not giving up, Raquel. Yes, we're not giving up. Get out your shovels. And a lot of times when you hit something that seems impossible, real tough, hard, you feel like, oh, it's too hard. No, hey, wake up. We're not quitting. Let's find a solution to this problem. And that's what they did. They start, get out your shovels. Let's see what they do now. All the Kinderfelds jumped off the train and went straight to work. Think about the poor people who need this food, said Mr. Kinderfeld. We can't let them down. We'll work hard, said all the children. We need to help those poor people. Everyone kept shoveling and scooping and shoveling and scooping some more. What were the children thinking about? Huh, Shannon? The people that were in the village. And what was, what was happening to those people in the village? They were starving. They were starving. Think about those poor people. And that's what motivated them. They were, and they had that compassion. You know, and that's what motivates us. You know, to try to help people. And that's why I've written these books, because I want to help boys and girls become successful. And just like here, these children say, oh, we got to help. we got to keep working. It's hard. It's tough. A big snowbank. Now, down here in Houston, we don't get much snow, but where I come from, we do get snow. And shoveling snow is hard work. But they kept it up because they thought about those poor people. All the Kinderfells shoveled long and hard. Finally, the track was cleared of snow, and the little red train could move again. Hooray! shouted the helpers. Hooray! You did a great job, said the little red train to the helpers. Even though the work was hard, you never gave up. I'll keep trying my best to reach the people on the mountain. Meanwhile, the people on the mountain gathered together and said to each other, 
What are we going to do? We're running out of food. Why don't the big trains come? They can't, the mayor answered. The snow is much too deep. Then a boy named Eric yelled, I hear something. It sounds like a train. The townspeople became excited and said to one another, Could it be a train is coming? Absolutely not, answered the mayor. He did not want the people to have false hopes. It's impossible for any train to climb the mountain in this deep snow. You must be hearing the wind. Meanwhile, a little red train kept puffing and puffing and puffing away, and the helpers kept singing, Try, 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 we'll do our best and try. Mountains we will try to scale, though it's hard and we may fail. Try, 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 we'll do our best and try. We'll try! To those on top of the mountain, the puffing and singing grew louder and louder. Eric shouted, It's a train! And I hear people singing. It is a train, shouted the mayor. The good news spread quickly, and everyone in the town ran to the station. Finally, from around the bend, the little red train appeared, slowly chugging his way toward them. He had not given up. He had made it up the steep mountain. The children threw their hands into the air and shouted, Hooray for the little red train! Hooray! Everyone crowded around the little red train as he pulled into the station. The helpers climbed out and gave the food to the hungry people. The people cried for joy. The children were so happy that they danced in the snow. Now everyone would have enough food for the winter. That night, the mountain village had a big celebration. The town leaders thanked each helper and the little red train for coming up the mountain. They gave each helper a gold medallion while the band played Try, Try, Try. What did the townspeople do now? Lisa? Threw a party and gave all of the people that helped a, a medal. Yes, they were thankful, weren't they? You know, it's important to be thankful. When somebody does something nice to you, to learn to say thank you. It's very discouraging sometimes you do something for someone and they can't even say those two simple words, thank you. They take everything for granted, but learn to be thankful. Let's see what they do now. Then the mayor stood before the little red train and declared, until now you have been called the little red train, but because you never gave up, even when things got hard and since you have taught us all to try, 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 we are giving you a new name. Then in front of the train, he placed the gold medallion, which read, The Triumphant Train. The Triumphant Train was very happy. He liked his new name. Then he smiled, a great big smile, said goodbye, and chugged his way back down the mountain with his helpers. The Triumphant Train went back to work in the valley. News spread everywhere about how the seven helpers and the triumphant train had saved the people on the mountain. From then on, whenever things got hard, people everywhere would sing the song of the triumphant train. Try, 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 we'll do our best and try. Mountains we will try to scale, though it's hard and we may fail. Try, 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 we'll do our best and try. We'll try! An award-winning song from Character Kids!
to get free coloring and activity pages, words to the song, and much more, visit our website at www.advancepublishing.com.